So in an attempt to pick up a little bit of bottom end, I picked up a 14 tooth front gear that I'm gonna go ahead and install here and replace the 15 tooth gear that it has on from the factory. So it looks like a pretty easy install. I'm gonna pull off this cover here that I believe then should just be a couple of bolts to pop off the old uh, gear and pop on the new. I think then I'll also have to look at the chain tensioner back here because that might leave the uh, chain a little bit loose, although I'm not sure, it may actually be fine. So uh, we'll go ahead and get this popped off and get the new gear on. It looks like there's two five millimeter Allen bolts holding this sprocket cover on. So there's a metal piece that um, goes in between this aluminum cover, has little pegs that it sits on. I'm not sure what its function is, but be mindful that that goes there because it just kind of fell out as I took the as I took this cover off. So it looks like there's just uh, two 10 millimeter bolts here. I'm gonna. And there's a lot of play in the tension. There's a lot of play in the chain already. So uh, I'll see what the overall size is of it, but I may be able just to put it in without making any adjustments to the chain. Let me go ahead and back these two bolts out. And then this little piece here is key to only come off at a certain angle. And then this should just slide right. All right, here's the old gear and here's the new gear. Uh, it was actually really cheap. I think it was like $7 from Amazon. It also came with uh, bolts and a new key. I'm going to see if I can't reuse the Honda ones though just because I'd expect that uh, the small Honda parts are probably slightly higher, higher quality than uh, than this is, but just make sure that this fits. Looks good as far as comparison to the old chain. Yeah, the overall diameter is slightly smaller. Uh, we'll get it on and see if it warrants trying to tighten the chain a bit to, if it's uh, too loose with this new one on. Yeah, the chain now is way too loose, so I am going to have to make some adjustments there. And again, make sure that you've got this metal bracket installed as well. So you can see the chain has way too much deflection now. So I'm going to back here, use this adjusting bolt to uh, back this out a little bit further, move the rear wheel out probably only a quarter of an inch or so, so that we only have about you know, an inch or so of deflection instead of the you know, three or four inches we have right now.
All right, wheels are off, um, and they're actually really easy to do. It's just a single bolt. It's a 14 millimeter um, bolt on one side and a 19 millimeter on the other. Uh, for pulling it off for the first time was pretty tough. I had to use a breaker bar, um, but otherwise it's just a bolt that runs through and both wheels slip off. So straightforward to do. Uh, but the reason that the wheels are off is that I'm going to get some new shoes. Uh, the tires that come on the bike, I like the scrambler look somewhat off-road, somewhat on-road, but they're not very confidence inspiring and going around turns feels a little squirrely. And then particularly on these high-speed runs that I've been doing, uh, I just like a, a little higher quality tire. So I ordered some new Michelin tires that I'm going to head down to GP Bikes right now to have them installed. They said that it was a lot cheaper if I just bring them the wheels instead of the whole bike. So I'm going to head down to the shop, get the new tires put on, and get them back on the bike. Okay, new rubbers mounted. Uh, the tires themselves, I think, were just over 100 I think maybe $120 for the pair, and then it was, I think, $50 to get them mounted. Um, but I really like the way they look, much more like a, a real tire. I mean, it looks similar to the back tire here on my ZX-6R. But um, that's the street tire profile that I was looking for. So looking forward to getting these on the bike and breaking them in. I'm sure, you know, they're not going to be too sticky until I get a few miles on them. Seven waves into the night on the beaches of Hawaii. Drinks in my visa. Anywhere you wanna go, baby, you just let me know. Sunny Indonesia, don't say no. Sipping on tequila. Anything you wanna see, be there in a heartbeat. Just say the words and we can go. We've got just one. Okay, so now two things that I've changed, one being the 14 tooth uh, front sprocket, and you saw in the ride video that I did that the GPS now shows a pretty significant difference with the odometer. And now with these new shoes, I think that this is probably also gonna throw it off a bit. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more riding and figure out um, how far off the speedometer is, and if it's anything more than a mile or two, I'll go ahead and uh, install a speedometer healer. Uh, regarding the front to 14 tooth sprocket though, I was really happy with the way that that performed. While my top speed only got to about 71 miles an hour, and actually I needed to do some more runs because when I, by the time I did that run, it was actually pretty windy, but it got up to 71 miles an hour much quicker than it did uh, with the 15 tooth front sprocket. And while I was able to get all the way up to 76 miles an hour with the 15 tooth, it seemed much more rideable with the 14 tooth. So I'm gonna do some more experimenting. I could potentially change some of the rear sprockets. If I could change the rear sprocket potentially if I wanted to really fine tune that, but I really like the way that it felt with that 14 tooth. So I'm gonna do some riding with these tires and the sprocket, see where I am with the gearing and the, how it relates to my speedometer readout against the GPS and then figure out where to go from there. All right guys, thanks for watching.